to walk in the shoes of retired U.S. Army four-star General Johnny E. Wilson is to follow in the footsteps of an American patriot. When I look back over the, the years of my adult life and the places I've been fortunate enough to visit, to travel, and interface with all the different kinds of people, uh, I always tell folks when I return back from overseas and land here in the great United States of America, it's a pleasure to come home. And I look at my life story, so to speak, and I can't think of any other place that would have afforded me the opportunity to achieve the way we have. It all started from improbable beginnings. The second of 12 children, Wilson grew up in the housing projects of Lorain, Ohio. Times were tough. To make ends meet, his father worked in the steel mills. His mother held down multiple jobs. Young Johnny and his brothers and sisters worked after school and in the summer to help out. We understood, I believe, that there's more in life than just the material things. We uh, learned from our parents that you really should be a good Samaritan. And all of us have lived by that in terms of assisting not only each other, but reaching out for a better community. Out of that childhood experience, Wilson learned the time-honored values of hard work, respect, and looking out for one another. We learned to respect our elders, irrespective of who they were, whatever station in life. And jokingly, I would say in the public projects, for example, when Mrs. Jones said, Johnny, get off the grass, you got off the grass. Graduating from high school, Wilson dreamed of going to college, but his family couldn't afford to send him and his personal savings were meager. So he joined the Army as a means to an end. So I could always see, even today, my mother standing on the corner at the bus stop when I got on this bus and she's crying saying, you don't have to go. And I say, Mom, we have signed the papers, I have to go. Intending to stay in the Army for only three years, Wilson would end up wearing the uniform for the next 38. Along the way, he would get that college degree, as well as a master's degree in logistics. He would qualify for officer's candidate school, become a logistics officer, and do a tour of duty in Vietnam with the 173rd Airborne Brigade, learning firsthand the power of logistics. As soon as there's a conflict and time to go to war, it has to be logistics, because in logistics, it's the ammunition, it's the transportation, it's the repair parts, it's the clothing, it's the food. Everything that you need to execute and win a conflict in a war happens to be in the umbrella of logistics. As he rose through the ranks, first as an enlistee and then as an officer, he served with distinction from Buck Private to First Lieutenant to Brigadier General of the Ordnance Corps to Chief Logistician of the Army to ultimately commanding general of the Army Material Command, in charge of and responsible for an organization of 80,000 soldiers in 44 states and 26 countries. To complete 38 years being part of the Army Material Command was an absolute joy. And even today, I stay engaged with a number of the people that I was lucky enough to work with and for, which is a good thing, and I think that's the beauty that you take away from the military. After moving with his family 29 times in 38 years, crisscrossing the United States and living abroad, it was time to settle down. He had reached the pinnacle of success, becoming the third African-American four-star general in U.S. Army history, a military advisor to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, a much sought after speaker on the lecture circuit. He even had a school named after him in Lorraine where he is frequently asked to speak. To have the opportunity to inspire young people is something the general considers one of his greatest honors. It's extremely important to do your best, to behave yourself, be respectful, and make sure you have a vision. Taking off the uniform for the last time, General Wilson joined Dimensions International, where he was instrumental in transforming the family-owned business into a defense logistics powerhouse. This caught the attention of Honeywell International, a defense and space leader which acquired DI in 2007. 
Honeywell has a reputation and is really the gold standard in my view. Today, the General is Honeywell's Vice President of Logistics, leading the global fast-growing enterprise which already is one of the top defense logistics companies in the world. We provide supplies to the military. We assist the military with property accountability. We assist the military with the maintenance of equipment that's on board ships that they use for pre-positioned fleet. We assist the military with building tank engines. Uh, so there are a range of logistics tasks that we perform. And I would say not because of me, but because of the team, they perform superbly. And each and every place I go, it's always a joy to hear people speak about the talent and the services that Honeywell has brought to their effort. General Wilson feels at home at Honeywell, at home with a company that shares his values. These are the values his parents instilled in him, the same values he grew up with in Lorraine, the same values he stood by in the Army, duty, honor, country. America, even though not perfect, it's military, it's clearly the finest military the world has seen, and in fact is the envy of armies throughout the world. Just like Honeywell, in its space, is the envy of many corporations, not only in America, but also throughout the world. 